I mean, is it too early to say Jacksonville made a mistake? Every reason that you would think that he would be a Dan Campbell guy is on display. Uh, I do believe is your X Factor player on defense, and there's nothing more important than a player that can get to the quarterback, Corey. How is Jared Goff going about camp so far? Better decisions with the ball. This is a this is a different Jared Goff because now he has weapons. And Ben Johnson is an over communicator. I love that. Join by our very own Detroit Lions beat reporter Corey Woods live at Allen Park for Detroit Lions training camp. Corey, good morning. Boy, Woods. What's going on? Good morning. You're looking good, man. God What's damn. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I wish I could have gave you guys a better view, but we're not trying to get in trouble here today. Oh, you're good. You're good. Look, Corey, I want to talk about a few things. The first, uh, notably, uh, Dan Campbell's comments and the staff's comments on Malcolm Rodriguez. Uh, he impressed yesterday with the first day of pads, hitting his key holes, uh, recognizing uh, what uh, diagnosing plays immediately. Uh, he could move up on the depth chart. That's, that's really not saying much considering how bad the linebacking core is. But is that a guy that we see as a day one starter? I mean, by the way, they're talking, he at least has the potential to play into that. I mean, he did look pretty physical out there yesterday. And you also have to remember, before practice started yesterday, not only Dan Campbell, but Aaron Glenn both singled out him and James Houston as two players that they were looking for. James Houston last week in pass. He was, he was getting after it as well, getting really quickly off the ball. His IQ was there, at least it appeared to be. So... I mean, hey, those those are two guys that are looking at is, is possibly going to get some of those reps in. Corey, uh, I want to move on to Jeff Akuda. Jeff Akuda, obviously, yesterday video surfaces. He gets beat on a back shoulder throw uh, by, I believe it was Josh Reynolds. Look, yeah. uh, I'm not going to call him. A, a damn thing <laughs> from one video, but uh, to me, that's just the NFL. Uh, it is very difficult to guard these wide receivers. It's difficult when the quarterback throws it when you're not even looking. Uh, we've seen this with Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford that cornered the end zone throw yesterday. Uh, it's just a passing league. It's a quarterback's league. It's a wide receiver's league. How has Jeff Okuda looked outside of that video? How has he looked in camp so far? He looked fine. You also got to remember this. Then Dan Campbell alluded to that this morning as well. The guy is virtu virtually, he's, he's, in, he's going into his third year. But technically, this is about to be his second season because he, he played his first year, has some injury concern. Last year, he virtually missed the entire season. So, I mean, he has to go ahead and get acclimated off of that. He's coming off of an Achilles injury, so they're going to be, I believe they're going to be ramping him up, you know, pretty slowly, and just in my opinion. I, I wouldn't really think too much about it. And also, too, it's one clip. He's looked good. I mean, he's played He's played well out here. I, I wouldn't think too much on one clip because you, there's nobody plays 100% perfect in practice. You can find one bad clip on everybody. Last week, uh, Panay Sua got beat three times in a row by – by Aiden Hutchinson. I don't think anybody's talking about releasing Sewell. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Speaking of Sewell, he shined yesterday. I mean, he really, I, he was in a class of his own yesterday. But talk to me about Penny Sewell's development. He will be at the right tackle position. How, how are the coaches feeling about this guy going into year two? Oh, they're feeling great about him. And also, also his teammates as well. They're feeling like he's going to be, again, they they feel the same way they felt about him last year. He's got that missing piece of making this line one of the top premier in the in the entire uh, conference. And and he's been looking pretty good. He's showing that strength. Uh, la that's also another guy who last year he he missed a year of football because of you know the whole COVID situation where he where he's, you know where he sat out. So that's also another guy that you got to look at. Is he's getting more acclimated to um to the game. He even talked about himself at the practice that the adjustment as far as the speed and getting things, getting the timing back together it started coming to him late in the year and now it's going to be even more with the full training camp another, another training camp under his belt I should say he he put in work yesterday he definitely made Aiden Hutchinson work for whatever he could get yesterday but speaking of yeah. Aiden Hutchinson the coaches have been very very high on his athleticism quote it was he's more athletic than we thought originally Talk to me about Aiden Hutchinson. Seems like he's the quiet guy going out there, letting his work do the talking for him, leading by example. How excited should Lions fans be for Aiden Hutchinson? And, I mean, is it too early to say Jacksonville made a mistake? Too early to say Jacksonville made a mistake, but I will say this. Every reason that you would think that he would be a Dan Campbell guy is on display. 
as you already just mentioned, he's coming out here. He's pretty humble. He's not trying to be a, a diva or anything like that. He's fitting in with the team concept. He's he, that that motor that everybody talked about where he plays whistle to whistle. That is on display. He looks even now. When I talked about his athleticism. I'm going to talk about his speed. He looks faster than expect than I've seen. I mean, I've been to Michigan games last year. He looks like he's even quicker than his time at Michigan. So he's been putting in that work in the off season. And he's also a lot more physical than I thought he was. So I believe that is one reason why they are very pleased with Aiden Hutchinson because he's coming in here and he's put in the work throughout the entire uh, mini camp OTAs up until now. You know, I'm actually really glad to hear that because Aiden Hutchinson is a guy that uh, I do believe is your X factor player on defense. And there's nothing more important than a player that can get to the quarterback, Corey. And speaking of which, Charles Harris, uh, Levi Onzerike, Aleem McNeil, uh, James Houston. You'll have uh, Josh Pascal when he returns from injury. And of course, Aiden Hutchinson, this defensive front, this, this defensive line could be and tell me if I'm wrong, the most valuable, not only most valuable, but the most impactful unit on this defense this season? Um, I think we need to see a little bit more things out of Aleem, to be quite honest. Um, Brockers had an okay year last year. Aleem, he, um, there's some things that I believe that he has to work on as far as his pass rush and um, as far as pass rushing and um, run, and run defense. But, I mean, they have the potential is there. They have the athletes. All those guys are coming in here and putting in their work. So, I mean, it's possible that they could, that what you're saying could very well be true. I would say one of the uh, more valuable units would be on the other side of the ball. Would be, would, of course, it would be the offensive line. But I mean, Aiden. I mean, with, with Aiden now in tow, and you know, another year with Aleem, another year with Brockers, it, it's very possible that they could take that leap this year. Corey, I, I do have to ask you about the offense. You mentioned it earlier, uh, specifically the line, but I want to talk about the coaches. I want to talk about Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell. How's that dynamic working out? How are they going about practice? What What have you seen so far compared to last season with Anthony Lynn that would lead you to believe, oh, this is this is much better, this is much different? Okay, you can take as much stock into this as you want. Last year... I didn't even really see Anthony Lynn um, being as vocal, as directive, you know, hand motion, as in, engaged with his players as I've seen Ben Johnson so far. I routinely see guys walking up to Ben, and he's, you know, he's really getting after them. He's getting after it, pointing out things on the field, you know, getting them where they need to be. Anthony Lynn, while he was out there yesterday, last year, and I can't say what he did or did not do, I did not see or hear him as vocal and demonstrative as I'm seeing Ben Johnson out there. And also, too, it looks like the players – they're really gravitating around him, too, as well. I, I see them all in constant conversation with each other. So take take whatever you will from that. But it's looks, looking like so far, at least from these early practices, that the Ben Johnson um, put, uh, um, appointing to all offensive coordinator is going to be something that will work out. Uh, that's something I love to hear. Communication is a big thing uh, that I love to hear as well. I'm glad they're very vocal. Corey. Again, uh, this time last year, Dan Campbell, this was his first head coaching job officially outside of the, the interim position, uh, new to the podium, new to the mic, new to the media, uh, new to uh, commanding a locker room, going into camp. How does he look this year compared to last year? For me, he looks a lot more comfortable. How would you describe it? Definitely a lot more comfortable, but out, and, um, and I said that yesterday on the bottom line. It's the same Dan Campbell. You're getting the same guy who is, is an eat, sleep, and breathing football. You're getting the same jokester and lighthearted gentleman. You're still getting that same intensity. That is there. What is removed is his nervousness. He seems now more sure of himself, more confident of the culture that he's instilling, of the game plan that he's trying to lay out. He's now more laser focused in what he's trying to get out of these players. Last year, while Dan Campbell was really out on the field and practicing with the players, I saw him really, you know, trying to get them where he needed to be. Now he's out there demanding. He's out there sure of himself. I believe that's the difference with year two of Dan Campbell. The, the, the things that make him who he is, they're still there. But now he's more lasered in on what he's trying to get out of his players. I love it. Corey, I do have to ask you one more question before we let you go. Jared Goff, how does Jared Goff look in camp? Uh, how, is he, uh, how is he as a human, uh, really, outside of his performance on, on the practice field? Is he 
more confident than he was last season. It was a bit of a tough, tough going to start his uh, Detroit career because, well, he was traded away from his really the team that drafted him for a quarterback we all agree is a better quarterback they end up winning the Super Bowl I mean that's a whole thing itself that probably affects you as a human how is Jared Goff going about camp so far honestly I believe this is the most comfortable I've seen Jared Goff now again we're comparing where he was this time last year compared to right now he is night and day more comfortable you also have to think about this with Jared Goff he was born in California he went to high school in California. He went to college in California. He spent his whole life in Cali. Then he gets traded to the Detroit Lions, and now he's in Michigan. So this is all, This is yes, last year was all new surroundings for him. He went from a perennial playoff team to a rebuild. He went from a coaching staff and a coach that he was comfortable with, talent, uh, uh, a place where he was not devoid of talent, to now he's trying to make guys. That's a hell of a transition for it. Any, any player, let alone a guy like him who some people don't even view as one of the premier quarterbacks. Now, a year, on, a second year under his belt, second year with a coaching staff, uh, second year with, with players that he's you know grown with, I'm seeing a lot more comfortable Jared Goff. Those, those you know, ducks, lame ducks, those underthrows, those overthrows that we saw this time last year, they're not there. We're seeing sharper passes, crisper passes, better decisions in the pocket. Better decisions with the ball. This is a this is a different Jared Goff because now he has weapons. He has the talent around him to be able to do something. When he was with the Rams, he was not. You don't want to put him in the Brady, the Rodgers category. But if you're putting him on the bottom tier of quarterbacks, that's doing him a disservice because when he had talent around him, Jared Goff proved to be a Pro Bowl quarterback. The Detroit Lions went out and provided talent so that they can see what they can get out of him for his last remaining couple of years here. So. I'm expecting the same thing that Ben Johnson charged him with. Uh, Jared Goff is going to have the potential to put out his best career season. Corey, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning. Appreciate it as always. You look damn good, buddy. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Got to look, got to look clean for you guys. <laughs> My Lions. man. My man. Corey Woods, Detroit Lions beat reporter for the Woodward Sports and Network. I know have the today. <laughs> I, Terry loves to give you crap about it, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, Corey. You're the man. Have a good You're the man. Oh, God. You know, it's actually really good to hear from Camp. I know Camp is it's easy going, right? They're all trying to get to know each other. But I think it's very important to understand where these players are and coaches are this time this year than they were last year. And I, I loved, I loved the bit, and I hope you guys caught it, where he said, you didn't really notice Anthony Lynn much communicating during camp last year. And Ben Johnson is an over-communicator. I fucking love that. Shut the hell up, Fish. I love that. Ben Johnson is everything so far. And more than what even I expected. And Jeff and I were one of the first ones to come out and say he should be the OC. If I remember, that was like in late October of last football season.